Imagine that Neha goes to school. She is sitting beside a classmate who is using a very beautiful pen. Neha asks her friend if she can take it home. But her friend says no. But Neha steals the pen. Fortunately, the teacher catches Neha and takes her to the principal. Now the principal is very angry. She scolds Neha and gives her extra homework to do for the rest of the week. Now, let us take this story to understand the organs of the government. Now every school or every institution has founders and these founders have made certain rules, certain written rules, certain spoken rules. But these are rules that are to be followed by the students, by the teachers and everyone who is there in the institution. Stealing is bad. This is a rule. And this rule has been made by these founders. Now when we see this in context of the government, these rules get transformed into laws. And the lawmakers, the founders, become the legislature. Similarly, the teacher who has made the students understand through years of teaching that stealing is bad has interpreted that law and implemented it or executed that law that the school management had made. So the executor of the laws of the government are known as the executive branch. The principal who has interpreted the law and gave the punishment to Neha is equal to the judge or the judiciary of the government of India. So the judiciary interprets the law resolves the disputes and administers justice. This body is known as the judiciary. Now the government of India is a huge body and it has many many roles to do, many many responsibilities to take. So what does it do? It divides its powers, its administrative responsibilities to different bodies. Different bodies such as the legislature, the executive and the judiciary the law making body, the law implementing body and the law interpreting body. These organs have specific functions that they do and make the working of the government smooth and efficient. Just like we have organs of our body that make our survival possible, these bodies together make the working of the government possible. Now, when we stay at home or we go to school, we have to follow certain rules, follow decorum. Just like when we stay at home, we have to wake up at a certain time when our parents wake us up. We have to eat the food together with the family. We have to go to play or go out at specified times. When we go to school, we have to wear our uniforms. We have to talk to our teachers, our fellow classmates very politely. We have to attend all classes. Just like that, the government has rules or laws. Who makes these rules? What happens if you do not follow them? Now the lawmaking body of the government is known as the legislature or more appropriately the union legislature. So what is the union? Union is just the center or the central government. So the union legislature is the legislature of the government or the legislature of the nation. Now, where does this word legislature come from? It comes from two Latin words, legis and lex, both of which mean law and later which means proposer. So if you join these two words together, it becomes the proposer of law. So the legislature is just a group of people who come together to make new laws or to propose new laws for a country or a state. The lawmaking body of India is the Union Legislature of India and it is known by a very special name which is the Parliament or in Hindi it is known as Sangsad. There are so many countries in this world. Countries differ so much depending on so many things. 
depending on their ruling governments, such as authoritarian governments or democratic governments, depending on their population, depending on their literacy, depending on their growth and development, and so many other things. So it's not possible for one form of legislature to work in all of these countries, right? So there are two types of legislature that are followed almost throughout the world. These work in different conditions. The first one works in a parliamentary government or a parliamentary system. And the second legislature works in a presidential system or a presidential form of government. These two forms of legislature are differentiated on the basis of separation of power. In a parliamentary system, there is no separation of power, while in a presidential system, there is separation of power. So now what is this separation of power? Separation of power is the separation or division of powers and responsibilities within the bodies of the government. The separation of power between the legislature and the executive branches of the government. Now in a parliamentary system, there is no separation of power. While in a presidential system, there is separation of power power. India has a parliamentary system. In this system, there are two heads, the head of the government and the head of the state. The head of the government is the real head, while the head of the state is a nominal head. The prime minister with his cabinet of ministers forms the head of the government. So the head of the government is the real head, while the head of the state is the nominal head. The head of the government or the real head is the prime minister of the country, while the head of the state is the president of our country. So what happens in a parliamentary system is that the executive, which includes the prime minister and his cabinet of ministers, forms the real head and the legislature has the precedent. In a parliamentary system, the legislature and the executive are interlinked and the ones who make the laws also help in implementing it. We can take the example of our own Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, who is of course a part of the executive since he is the Prime Minister. But Mr. Narendra Modi is also a member of the Lok Sabha, which is a part of the parliament. So someone can be a part of the legislature and the executive simultaneously. Now this is not what happens in a presidential system, the system that works in USA. In that system, the head of the state and the head of the government is the president. There is no real head or nominal head. They are all the same person. And there is separation of powers. So the legislature and the executive are not linked. They are separate bodies. And a member of the legislature cannot be a member of the executive. So why does India have a parliamentary system where there is no separation of power, while America has a system of separation of power? In our country, there is a huge population and there is diversity and difference. So the people of the parliament have to represent people from all sections of society and all regions. Any law which is passed through the legislature has to work for all people of the country. There is a lot of pressure on the legislature to pass laws throughout the year because these laws will have different effect on different people. Let's take an example. If there is a ban on eating beef, this will affect the Hindu population and the Muslim population very differently because it is a thing of culture. Also, people from different regions will be affected differently because not people from all regions consume beef. Therefore, what happens in the parliamentary systems legislature is that there is a lot of pressure. So sometimes the legislature gives out some of its power to the executive so as to reduce its pressure. And also, for such a huge pressure, there has to be good communication between the two organs. The absence of separation of powers has another advantage. 
it is that the legislature and the executive can keep a check on each other and see that the other body is not misusing the powers in the presidential system that works in countries like usa what happens is that their population is quite less compared to that of the countries in a parliamentary system so the pressure on the legislature is also less compared to that on parliamentary systems legislatures because the laws that will be passed will affect the people of the country almost uniformly on the contrary in a presidential system the population is less diverse and in such countries the pressure on the legislature is also comparatively lesser than that in parliamentary system in such systems the president also has limited powers so that the president also cannot overpower the legislature or the executive when we said that usa has separation of powers so that no body can overpower the other organ you must be thinking that how does india ensure this how does india ensure the presence of checks and balances in the powers of the organs well this is because the indian legislature has in itself two bodies so it's called a bicameral legislature the indian parliament is bicameral what does bicameral mean bi means two and camera means chamber so then bicameral means two chambers so the indian legislature or the parliament has in itself two houses now you must be thinking why india has two houses that execute the exact same functions well when you finish your paper in the exam don't you recheck it again so that there is minimum mistakes in the paper just like that a lower house and upper house the two bodies ensure that the laws that are passed from one house are rechecked in the second house sometimes because of the heavy pressure on the legislature of the country some laws get passed which have mistakes in them sometimes due to hasty legislation or fast legislation there may be mistakes or problems that exist in the laws so the second house reconsiders and rechecks the laws that are passed by the first house so as to ensure that the laws that are passed are efficient and have as less mistakes as possible the indian parliament has two chambers as we said two houses these two houses are called the lok sabha and the rajya sabha the lok sabha as is evident from the name represents the lok or the public of the country it is the lower house because members of the lok sabha are directly elected by the public or the lok of the country rajya sabha as its name suggests represents the rajya which is the states it speaks for the states and it is called the upper house because members of the rajya sabha are indirectly elected as we have learned in a parliamentary system the president is the head of the state who has nominal powers but we must remember that the president is neither a part of the lok sabha nor the rajya sabha so he does not sit in the proceedings of either house but the president does have some roles in regards to the parliament now let us understand what these roles or functions are the president summons and prorogues the house from one session to another summons means calls and prorogues means postpones so the president has the power to call for the meetings or the sessions of the houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha and he also has the power to postpone such meetings the president also has the power to dissolve the lok sabha the lok sabha has a 5 year term the members of the lok sabha stay in the house for 5 years after these 5 years there is a need to dissolve the house the president does that after which new elections to the lok sabha will happen sometimes even before this 5 years is completed 
the prime minister may advise the president to dissolve the house in which case the president dissolves the house and the life of the lok sabha ends before 5 years a bill is a proposal for a law now every bill that has to be passed through the legislature to become a law requires the assent or the approval or the signature of the president the bill doesn't become a law unless and until it is passed by the lok sabha the rajya sabha and is approved by the president on top of this certain bills cannot be even initiated in either of the houses without the permission or the recommendation of the president the president has to recommend these bills so that they can be initiated in the lok sabha or in the rajya sabha such bills include the money bills such as the ones that deal with taxes or borrowing or lending money of the government now we've learned about the two houses the lok sabha and the rajya sabha and also learned about the functions of the president all of these three bodies make up the parliament of india according to article 79 of the constitution the lok sabha the rajya sabha and the president together make up the parliament of india so now let us just recap what all we have learned we've understood that the government of india is a huge body and it has a lot of functions so it needs to divide its power among the other organs of the government such as the legislature the executive and the judiciary we have concentrated on the legislature we know that india has a parliamentary system the indian parliamentary system has its origin or is inspired by the westminster system which is the parliamentary system of government which was first there in the united kingdom we know that the indian parliamentary system has a real head and a nominal head we also know that the real head comprises the prime minister and his cabinet ministers which forms the executive branch of the government the nominal head comprises the president the prime minister and his cabinet of ministers that is the executive act as the head of the government while the president acts as the head of the state we've also learned that the legislature of india is a bicameral legislature and it has two houses the rajya sabha and the lok sabha we've also learned that there is no separation of power in a parliamentary system such as in india where the legislature and the executive are not separate from each other they work together to make the government function more efficiently don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the delta step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy; it is rewarding too. So register for free now.